evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 of the root of x plus 3 minus the root of 3 over x. OK, right away we recognize that if I were to plug in 0 for x, I would get a 0 in the denominator. And that's just not allowed. So we're going to have to look for ways to get around this. Simplify things so that in the end, we can hopefully get rid of this x and plug 0 in for x. That way we can evaluate the limit. My strategy here is going to be to multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction, the numerator and the denominator, by the conjugate of the top. So the conjugate of the square root of x plus 3 minus root of 3 is just going to be root of x plus 3 plus root 3. Now we multiply the top of the fraction, so we need to multiply the bottom of the fraction also. There we go. So that nothing changes, right? Because this is actually just 1. All right. Now, of course, let me copy down limit as x approaches 0. Yes, we do unfortunately need to copy or to write down the limit as x approaches 0 in every single step along the way. OK, so now let's continue. And now multiply top by top, bottom and bottom. So the root of x plus 3 times the root of x plus 3 is just going to be x plus 3, because essentially the square roots just cancel out. Then we need to FOIL it, essentially, right? So next, 1 over root of x plus 3 times the root of 3 is just going to be square root of 3 times, <coughs> sorry about that, 3 times x plus 3. Then we have minus root 3 times root x plus 3, which is going to be minus 3 times x plus 3. Then finally, minus root 3 times plus root 3, which is going to be minus root of 9, which is 3. This video is going to end up longer than I expected, but that's OK, as long as you're learning, right? Hopefully you're learning. So. Now x, I'll just distribute it down below, x times the root of x plus 3. Or actually, I'm I changed my mind. I'm actually just going to leave the x over here and distribute this later if necessary. And why do I do that? Why, why have I chosen to do so? Because perhaps we're going to be able to factor things out up top, simplify them, and then just cancel something out. You'll see. We're almost there. So what's going to happen? We have the square root of x 3 times x plus 3 minus the root of 3 times x plus 3. So these just cancel out. And that's why, of course, we, we chose to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the top. Now we end up with x plus 3 minus 3 up top, all over. Let me draw a straighter line. There we go, for our fraction. Then down below we have x times the root of x plus 3 plus the root of 3. Now look at this. Up top we have 3 minus 3, which is 0. So they're gone. They're gone. Fantastic. Let me continue. We have the limit as x approaches 0 of x over x times. Sorry about that. I'm a, I'm a perfectionist today, so I'm going to make very straight lines. And right now my computer is almost freezing. Please don't freeze. There we go. OK. All over x times the square root of x plus 3 plus the square root of 3. Now the x's can cancel out, and we end up with a 1 up top. 
in the numerator. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over, this wasn't too bad this time, x, the root of x plus 3 plus the root of 3. And note that now, if I plug in, if I plug 0 in for x, I will no longer have 0 in the denominator. And that's what I wanted. So now I can finally evaluate the limit. So let's plug the 0 in for x, thereby getting rid of the limit and evaluating it. So we have 1 over the root of 3 plus root of 3. And that's just going to add up to 1 over <coughs> root 3 plus root 3 to root 3. So that is our limit evaluated. And that's it.